Hello boys and girls, I'm gonna show you how I set my Fox 38 up. Let's check this part of the fork out first. Make sure we get it correct. Now there's some cutouts in the lower legs that makes the 38 special. And here's the components within the pinch bolt assembly. A tube, a shim, a washer, and a nut. The little tube slides back and forth to take up space variation between different hubs of wheels. So carefully slide that tube back in and then slide the shim on the top and make sure it's not fully locked down or tightened. Pop the wheel back in the fork, put the axle in, and to my knowledge, all Fox 38s have this quick release lever. Tighten that down and make sure it's good and tight, not too tight. If it's in the position like this, it's incorrect. Go to the back side of the fork or the axle and turn this four millimeter nut bolt inside the axle and this will allow you to get different angles of the quick release lever. So Fox says to imprint your hand on the lever when you tighten down the quick release lever. From my experience, I don't know if I've ever imprinted Fox on my hand, but the tightness you want is good and tight and not too tight and not too loose. Now Fox says to make it one to 20 millimeters away with the quick release lever from the lower leg. I like to make it as close as possible without touching. Before tightening down the six millimeter pinch bolt, you're supposed to jostle the bike. I forgot to do this, but oh well. Now the only time you need to adjust that pinch bolt assembly is if you change wheels. But the real world answer is this bolt comes loose quite frequently, so you need to reset this more than you would think. Okay, the next step is super important if you buy used forks like myself or you're unfamiliar with the Fox 38. We need to remove the top cap to check how many tokens are in the fork, if it's a used fork, like I said. You're gonna need a flat bladed 32 millimeter socket or this handy dandy tool I bought on Amazon. It's a little bit of a process. Make sure you put pressure down on your wrench or socket or ratchet because there's not much area to grip onto the top cap. It's very easy to mar up the edges on this, so be very careful and do not use a crescent wrench. The Fox 38 is a special type of fork because of the air spring design. So we need to start out with the tokens that Fox recommends in the setup guide. I have a 170 millimeter fork and it comes with two tokens. And as you can see here, the 150 millimeter Fox 38 comes with four tokens. So as the travel goes up, you're going to need less tokens. I have tested this with zero, one, and two tokens, and it rides the best with two tokens for me, but that's me, and you could be different. If you feel a wall of resistance or you're a light rider, you're going to need to remove some tokens. And for the heavyweight riders or the senders, you may be like six tokens on a 150 millimeter travel fork. Just for an example, if you're 120 pounds, remove all the tokens, and this fork is absolutely amazing with no tokens, but the problem is it rides like a dual crown fork and it's very linear and it blows through its travel. Now open both compression knobs fully counterclockwise in the full open setting and leave them there. Let's use the handy dandy archaic Fox PDF guide to find a baseline air pressure to save some time. Highlight your fork and damper and if you have a Fox 38 with a fit for damper, let me know because I've never seen one. Pump her up to that specified Fox number because let me tell you, it's very accurate. Let's flip the bike over if you're retarded like myself and set up the rebound. Flipping the bike over will make your life easier because you can see which way the arrow goes and it makes it easier to film for me, but I usually do this anyway. Once again, let's get back to that cheat sheet and there's some really good informations or suggestions for a starting rebound. There's also a lot of valuable information inside of this PDF, like higher air pressures are gonna need a slower rebound because these higher pressures need less return force. So turn the knobs all the way clockwise and then count the clicks in the counterclockwise fashion according to the Fox setup guide. Now I'm a pretty heavy guy at 110 PSI or 220 pounds and it's telling me two clicks from slow and three clicks from slow on the low speed rebound. If you ride dual crown forks, the 38 will feel very natural to you because that's the type of air spring it has. And if you don't ride dual crown forks, it will feel unfamiliar on your first couple rides. We need to make sure the front and rear is balanced. Like, does the front feel more squishy than the rear? This is the most important thing in the video. Now, try not to turn any knobs to make the balance even. Ideally, you use air pressure because these are air shocks. 
but if you don't have an air pump, you can use the compression levers to compensate this. I call this my medium speed section of trail. Verifying the rebound feels acceptable as far as not too fast and not too slow. The second bracketed section of trail should be a higher speed section. Once again, check the rebound. If it feels good, you could just stop here. It'll probably feel fine because the Fox setup guide is super good. But if you want the most performance, you need to flip the bike upside down and slowly increase the rebound on this 38. Now these big boy Fox 38, RockShox Zeb forks, they like a faster rebound to get more performance. Two clicks of low speed, one click of high speed. Move them at the same time. Don't get all jargoned up and confused. And start your bracketed section of trail, ideally the same section of trail, over. Okay, a slightly faster rebound on this bike. It feels more poppy. Allowing me to get better pop and basically jump better. There's a very fine line between too fast and too slow. Rerunning that faster section of trail, the rebound is borderline too fast. As we can see, the front tire is kind of bouncing off the ground. Now remember this 38 millimeter stanchion will give you better performance by running a faster rebound. Now, that being said, if I'm death gripping my handlebars on a downhill line that's way out of my pay grade, I will slow the rebound down. But for blue flow trails, this is the way to go. Now let's explain compression. I don't really care about you suspension theorists. Every single person I talk to has a different theory on compression and a different approach to it. Here's the dummy approach. You need to understand how it feels. That's all you need to do. So take the top cap and crank that thing all the way clockwise. It'll be like 14 or 16 clicks of low speed compression. Now go to a steep section of trail and go down it slowly. Pay attention to how it feels. Now repeat the process with a fully open low speed compression knob and you will basically understand compression. As you can see, they look exactly the same, but they feel very different. If you add too much compression for your weight, it will feel like the fork is choked up. Here's the dummy answer. I turn five clicks of low speed compression on every single fork I ride and then I never touch it again. The last setting will be high speed compression. Now the suspension theorists will tell me it's not bottom out control, but let me tell you, it is bottom out control. Find a hook to flat, start in the fully soft setting, add one click at a time until it feels like it's having some supportive feel at the end of the stroke. If you get this sound out of your fork, add two clicks of high speed compression. Now I find it best to start in the fully soft setting and adding one click at a time on the high speed compression when going off a drop like this one. Now when setting your bottom out control, you have high speed compression, air pressure, and tokens. Always start with the easiest one, high speed compression, then maybe air pressure, and then tokens last. But remember, if you use tokens, you have to start the whole process over because it will screw your rebound up. Few things to note about the 38, you can use Fox 36 tokens in it. They clip on, those are purple tokens from a 36. It's the same tools, 32 millimeter. So there's a lot of crossover, but the air spring makes it such a different fork. So the bleed valves here, they're very important. If you're at high elevation, go to the highest point of the day and press those down. If there's pressure built up inside of the fork and you press them down, a lot of oil will come out. Or if you set the fork down on them, it will puke oil all over your bench. Don't ask me why I know this. The fender is secured through the bleed valves. It's a 15 millimeter. Be careful when you put the fender on because there's not much nut to grab onto. To see the completely different approach from RockShock, click the video on the screen now to avoid that massive setup mistake.